Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Ding Dian S3 Mini PC. This is a ultra compact Windows computer from a brand that admittedly we haven't seen as much in the past, but they do seem to make quite a few models that claim to offer really compact sizes. And of course they have a variety of other models that can become more powerful, including the S3 here, which has more upgraded specs, which we can see here is inclusive of a Intel Pentium Silver N6000 processor, which is clocked up to 3.3 gigahertz at the turbo speed, and also has RAM configuration up to 16 gigabytes, which is also quite generous for a model that, again, it really is valuing portability. Oftentimes, a lot of these mini PCs will come with just 4 gigabytes, and in terms of the memory, it has 512 gigabytes of SSD built on in, which is further expandable via a SATA 2 slot. It even has Bluetooth 5.2 which is impressive because a lot of the other budget mini PCs are still stuck on older versions of Bluetooth like 4.0 or 4.2, so this will allow us to connect to wireless buds, have even less latency. Aside from the mini PC, other accessories that we get include a compact folding power adapter, which I do like to see that they are using a standard USB Type-C, as you can see there, which is awesome. You can also power this thing using just a, uh, let's say, power bank that supports power delivery. You even get the screws which are removed for you to upgrade the SSD. There is also a mounting bracket if you want to attach this to the back of a monitor or TV, since it really is super small and light. There is also a included HDMI cable, which is a neat extra, along with a quick start guide. So taking a closer look at the design, it does look quite clean, and the thinness here I think is what really strikes me the most. Very compact and portable, especially for a version that has 16 gigs of RAM. Here it is next to just, let's say, an average smartphone these days that has around a 6.5 inch display. It's impressive, I would say, for the compact size that we see here. It has this interesting two-tone finish, one side which is glossy. It does attract a little bit of fingerprints, but looks quite clean and shiny, has an Intel logo, and the other side is is made out of a more matte polycarbonate plastic that has some fans for ventilation. All of the I.O. here are located on the rear, which includes the Type-C for power, another Type-C here for data, 3.5mm auxiliary port, Ethernet if you don't want to use the built-in Wi-Fi, full-sized HDMI that supports 4K, and then three USB 3.0 ports. So overall a decent selection along with more ventilation on the sides, so that will kick in to prevent the mini PC from overheating, again just very slim. In fact, here it is next to something like a standard U.S. quarter to give you an idea. We also have on the very back here just some rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on the surface or desk. Underneath which we can have access to again the second slot there just for popping in another SSD. And last but not least we of course have just a power key located on the front with a LED status light and that's essentially it. Now if we do just a quick size comparison once again, this is definitely small as far as even mini PCs are concerned. In fact, a more average sized unit would be something like this, and even this is already considered to be pretty compact for a tabletop mini PC. So here's as loud as the fan essentially gets when it's turned on, and you can hear that definitely has a little bit of background noise. That really is not bad at all. Now in terms of the boot up times, thanks to the use of a real SSD instead of, let's say, a slower eMMC drive, uh, it is typically fast to get into Windows, taking me roughly just 10 seconds after turning it on. Immediately, some things that we can observe here include that yes, we can definitely upgrade to Windows 11, meets all of the requirements, and can be done for free. So you have the option to choose whether you want to stay on the 10 that it comes with, or just upgrade with a click uh, to that newer user interface style. You can see that really out of the 512 SSD, there is a portion taken up by the Windows operating system. So about 446 gigs are free, allowing you to install other applications, programs, and media content. But again, you can always supplement that with another slot. And like I said, the read and write speeds are quite fast and swift. So things like opening up different programs, navigating the UI at the very least, do seem to be holding up quite well. Also thanks to the processor not being too problematic, it still is energy efficient and still is relatively entry level. It's not going to really rival an Intel Core i series for instance, but it will still get you by here and these general navigation tasks still feel pretty snappy and responsive as you can see there. Now jumping into some web browsing and performance tests before we take a closer look at how it renders a page, I do just want to mention some of the benchmark scores as reference. Of course, synthetic benchmarks don't really tell the full story of the experience, but 
Here they are just as reference. So the aforementioned Intel Pentium N6000 does have a quad core architecture and it is giving us a pass mark score of 2,800. All the components that they've selected on this model at least are quite current. Nothing really stands out as being too outdated. In fact, other mini PCs that we've seen recently for around $200 to $300 have used chipsets like the Celeron N3350 that we talked about. Uh, that gives us a score now of about 1,123. This is pretty much as baseline as you can get these days before getting into nearly unusable territory. This will just scrape you by. And then the N3450 is going to be a little bit better because it's quad core instead of dual core, 1,900 or so. And then also the Celeron N4100, another popular chip in many of these mini PCs, around 2,450. So again, these N6000 used on this model will definitely be a little bit faster by contrast. And that does translate to being just a little snappier as I'm navigating around. Now, if we take a closer look at, again, things like browsing the web, I can jump into a more complex page like The Verge, and you can see how the loading times are almost instantaneous there, despite being a pretty complex web page. Lots of ads, lots of videos and text details, but it was very fast to render and there's no delays or hiccups as we are scrolling along. I think it's also due to the really strong Wi-Fi reception, which I'm consistently getting nearly full bars thanks to the fact that the chipset that they're using here is the Intel AX201 that supports Wi-Fi 6 protocol. Otherwise, like I said, in terms of web browsing, you really wouldn't have any problems here even loading up a lot of different pages to kind of do a bit of research, jumping back and forth between over 20 tabs. Everything was still held in the system's RAM without any issues. So I think it's plenty generous for a model like this. If we try and load back a video and play back something up to 4K resolution, let's see how that it does in terms of the processor and the GPU. We'll turn on stats for nerds and begin to play this back. So this will serve as the demo of if you're watching something from YouTube, Netflix, really anything in Ultra HD, how that fares. You can see that transition times are still quite fast, even as we are scrolling along. The clip pretty much plays back almost instantly, no real buffering either, thanks again to the fairly up-to-date uh, even though entry level, but a current generation chipset paired with Wi-Fi 6, I think is doing really well. Plus, again, the fast SSD and uh, everything is coming together quite nicely. So we can see here that as we are playing this back, there are a few drop frames. So I see four that have been dropped uh, while we were kind of navigating along there, but nothing is visible to the eye. And I have to say this is faring much better compared to some of the other really entry level mini PCs that we've seen previously. Like I said, running on the N3 450, much more common, that would have had a lot more drop frames and you would need it to wait typically longer, especially if you're trying to play back clips in 4K resolution. On this, it's just very fast and seamless. I can scrub between parts of the video and everything is still just loading along here just fine. So now let's do a quick demo of loading back a document if you're trying to use this for work. This is a pretty complex sample spreadsheet with a lot of cells here stretching almost a thousand lines uh, with plenty of different pivots and filters. And you can see that everything is still loading along here just fine. So when it comes to doing some processing, whether it's in Office, Excel, PowerPoint, if you're a student, if you're a even a mobile professional, this really shouldn't be an issue. And really the same thing can be said when it comes to editing and taking a look at documents such as PowerPoints. You can edit, create these, share and present really without any lag or problems at all. Doing a bit of light coding, whether it's Jupyter Notebook, it's also completely feasible if you're just getting started with Python and it should also be just fine when it comes to just, again, these basic tasks, whether for school, whether it's for work. If you're trying to do a little bit of photo editing through Adobe, that's also gonna be completely fine on here as well. However, if you're getting into the realm of video editing, I would say that's where things get a little more tricky. Granted, we are talking about still relatively current gen specs, but like I said, still is an entry level chipset at the end of the day and using Intel's integrated graphics. You can technically do a little bit of editing and splicing of certain videos, especially if they're at full HD resolution. In my testing, about a five minute video took around eight to nine minutes to export. Similar to gaming, that's an area where you would ideally want a more powerful GPU, so something Ryzen power typically, uh, or just a more expensive model in general compared to this one, which is all about portability, so more about simple office and web browsing, as well as video streaming is going to be its forte. Some of these lighter, more mobile-centric games 
Among Us. This will certainly load here just fine, but if you're trying to play back some of these titles natively, especially getting into some of the AAA style games, you would ideally want something with more powerful internals. Uh, you can definitely play these at lower graphic settings, but in that case, I would definitely recommend a cloud streaming service such as xCloud or Stadia. As long as you are connected to the internet and a display, you're just ready to go. But of course, those services will cost you a little bit of money depending on if it's worth it to you, but it will allow you to unlock more powerful gaming with older games, especially some of the more retro emulators that will, of course, will load without any issues. Castle Defender style game, any of really the Microsoft Store games uh, that will definitely work really without any issues. In fact, fast frame rates, everything is still responsive, but that's really expected, I would say, for a unit like this, which again is all about that portability. And here's a final example of Crossfire, which will still also be all right if you're playing things along. So just keep your expectations in line and don't expect this to be kind of natively the most powerful gaming PC, and I think you'll be just fine here. Again, performance being a little bit better than some of the truly budget, bottom-of-the-line mini PCs uh, that we've seen previously. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of this uh, Ding Dian S3 mini PC, and overall a pretty fast experience for just simple web browsing, no issues there, office document editing, no issues there either, as well as streaming back videos at 4K. You can check out more details if you're interested in the links below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.